Hello guys and welcome back again to another episode of the Babylonian Crypto Channel. Today we're going to talk about this project called Arcash. Arcash is built on the Cosmos SDK, so this is quite a popular one to look at within the Cosmos ecosystem. And they are doing decentralized cloud computing. Before that, this is not financial advice, so please do your own research. Everything runs on the internet and everything that is online needs servers. And right now, the great four horsemen that is running the entire backbone of the internet is dominated by Amazon, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and Alibaba Cloud. So these four alone takes up more than 80% of the market share. So right now, there's a concentration risk that is uh, consolidated among these four companies. And you can see that here are some uh, reports that uh, have shown their abuse of power. So Amazon uh, partner with China propaganda arm. So this news is about uh, the Xi Jinping book, right? And they re they actually remove all the negative reviews out there. And this is like the best review book. There's only five star review. And then the other one is uh, this Palace uh, Deep Platforming. So this news was quite big uh, in January last year. And Amazon actually has the power to actually deep platform the entire website. And also Alibaba Cloud also uh, recently due to regulations in China, they actually uh, made a call to ban all these uh, cryptocurrency and mining companies. So all the nodes that are using Alibaba Cloud, they also have to comply and they have to uh, remove all their operations. And right now, the Ethereum mainnet, more than 50% of the hosting of all these nodes is actually on Amazon. So this is quite scary if you think about it because uh, what happened to those nodes that are using Alibaba Cloud can also happen uh, for these uh, nodes that are on Ethereum. And you can imagine what happens if like Amazon decides to shut down everything and the, this whole uh, Ethereum network will be, will be affected, right? So the solution is Web3 is to create this uh, censorship resistance, permissionless, neutral, open, and uh, decentralized cloud computing. And that is what uh, Arcash uh, is proposing in the crypto world. So right now there are 8 million data centers and 85% of it is unused capacity. It's just uh, idle or either that they are just used for uh, backup purposes. And it's quite uh, inefficient that, that all this uh, data is actually not being used. So you can think about these concepts of how unused cars and then Grab uh, came in and then took over uh, all this opportunity. And the same thing also happened for unused rooms and Airbnb came to provide uh, this platform. So Arcash is doing the same thing, but they're doing for unused data. And right now they have already partnered up with all these data center partners. So these are like tier one, tier two uh, data centers. So Equinix Matter is actually the largest, world's largest data center. So they have already uh, worked together with uh, Arcash to do this. So all these data centers, their unused capacity, they, they are actually renting it out to Arcash. And whenever people want to host something through Arcash, uh, they have to pay AKT token and that goes directly to all these uh, data providers here. And you can see over here that Arcash is actually much, much cheaper than uh, all these uh, Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft Azure because for the simple reason that they have a huge, huge supply right now because they are capitalizing on this 85% unused uh, capacity. So they have a huge supply of uh, data and they can afford to charge uh, much, much cheaper than the competitors. Then the next question you might think is, uh, there must be some trade-off, right? It can't be too good to, to be true, right? So most will probably think about the security and stability uh, of hosting on Arcash. But if you think about it, Arcash has never been uh, down ever since its main, main net, not a single uh, downtime. But Amazon has been down, I think, like three, four times last year. Uh, June and December, I think, was quite a pop quite a big one. Uh, one of their very biggest data centers actually uh, went offline and it affected the entire world. So the same thing also happened for Google. Uh, in November 16, a lot of uh, apps are unusable because uh, some uh, nodes went offline. But Arcash actually has uh, no downtime as mentioned earlier. And Arcash has already been live uh, mainnet since March 2021 and they are uh, already five years in development. So here are some interesting metrics that you can look at. So all these uh, CPU memory storage is what is actually currently being leased out. So those uh, unused capacity, uh, now they are being used by uh, some of these uh, deployments. So in total right now, there are 78,000 uh, that have actually hosted on Arcash before. And daily, there are about 600. 
and this total AKT spend this is a very good metric because it measures a direct uh, demand uh, for our cash network and right now so far people have spent about uh, 21,000 AKT that's uh, not a very big number but uh, it's still a good start so a more accurate representation uh, of this total deployment should be looking at the active leases so these are the one that are currently still on our cash network that are still leasing and out of these uh, 78,000 maybe some of them are just for test net some of them are just for short term maybe one two months but uh, this 500 is actually for uh, longer term leases and they are still currently alive right now and these are the daily new leases that are happening every day so these are uh, metrics to show the health of the activity on uh, our cash network and this is for daily AKT spend and in terms of the Web3 world, these are all the applications that have already uh, went live on Arcash. So Osmosis, Rango Exchange, and then uh, NFT and Gaming, these two, and then Media, uh, these two. So it is a good start. And they are going to onboard more depths from Solana and Polygon soon. Solana, Arcash haven't made a formal announcement. So this is quite interesting when he said this. But Polygon, uh, they have already announced officially. And also Akash is powering Gravity Bridge on Cosmos. So this Gravity Bridge is very, a very, very big milestone uh, that uh, the Cosmos ecosystem people are looking at. So Akash is actually behind this. And in 2022, they actually also announced some interesting partnerships. So one is uh, Coastack. Coastack is a decentralized cloud aggregator. And they have announced plans to deploy on Akash uh, in, for their node network. And then next is uh, Chia Network. So Chia is uh, another L1, which is relatively uh, unheard of as of now. But I think they are the most decentralized network. They have about 350,000 nodes uh, running this, I think. And they also partner up with uh, Arcash. So next is Polygon. So Polygon has also announced partnership with Arcash and they have some uh, bounty matching program uh, to offer this uh, Polygon ecosystem who have, uh, whatever applications they actually has the option to uh, deploy on Arcash. So it'll be interesting to see who is the first uh, Polygon applications to, to deploy on Arcash. And then next is uh, Kava. So Kava Labs also uh, announced that uh, they will be using Arcash and Helium. So Helium is a very big project uh, within the Web3 space. They have about 600,000 hotspots right now. And, and uh, some of these nodes are slowly migrating over also to use uh, Arcash network. Because if you think about it from a big picture, all these Web3 applications need a Web3 solution on the back end, right? It doesn't make sense if you are still using Web2 servers. So eventually, if Arcash becomes successful, then all these nodes would definitely migrate over to Arcash. And cost is uh, one thing, stability and decentralization, all these are also uh, other benefits that comes with it. So next is this uh, inflation update. So this is also quite a big one. So Arcash recently just reduced their inflation. So before that, I think it was about 33% uh, APY staking. So all this inflation are actually just like uh, incentives for all the nodes. But recently they have just cut down. So before that it was 25% to 40%. But right now it has uh, been reduced to 20% to 30% range. This is to slow down the inflation rate as they slowly move towards a uh, growth phase. And speaking of tokenomics, there's also one very important update that is happening uh, by next month. So every six months, there is a big unlock uh, since uh, September 2020. So the next big unlock is actually happening on uh, March 2022. So you can see over here that uh, about 8 million worth of tokens is going to be unlocked from uh, investors on March 2022. And then team and advisors about 6 million and yeah so so total there will be about 20 million i think there will be unlocked uh, in march so definitely there will be some volatility here uh, in march so that's about it for tokenomics so inflation has been reduced and that also means your staking api has been reduced and also there's going to be a big unlock uh, that is happening next month so next is 2022 roadmap what is next for our cash right so their focus team for this year is actually uh, a lot on the developer tooling side, the UI, UX, and just uh, pushing adoption in general. Because right now, the whole uh, onboarding process is very clunky, is very uh, unintuitive. It's only for very, very technical people who knows uh, what is going on. 
but a normal developer a normal user would not have any idea how to deploy their applications or apps on our cache so this is one thing that they are really focusing on to create this uh, developer uh, hub like starport in cosmos that, that helps uh, everybody to come on board easier some interesting updates that are also coming out uh, one is persistent storage so this persistent storage is not our with it's a uh, different thing so this persistent storage is their own uh, feature and what this means is so right now if you deploy on our cache and if let's say your app uh, is not working or the network is down or for whatever reason you can't actually restore the state of your uh, application so if you have to restore it you will be at the exact state where you have uploaded it even if there have been changes or updates uh, to your applications so this persistent storage means that uh, it will actually store and record the state uh, of your application so uh, when you restart your app it will actually be the saved uh, version of it so that's in a nutshell next is this expansion into gpu market so right now all this leasing of unused capacity from all these data centers are actually uh, cpu so they are now moving into gpu in the future so gpu unlocks uh, more new use cases such as machine learning uh, rendering and all these uh, other things that actually uh, are more computationally intensive but this is still a, a roadmap that i think only happening around q3 or q4 if i'm not wrong so in a nutshell i think our cash right now is uh, at this uh, black dot uh, stage here so they are really focused on adoption and they have spent the past five years uh, building this foundation uh, building this whole product and right now it's already live it's, it's already working it's not a white paper it's not a proof of concept stage and i think if they are successful if they continue to ship and deliver and they continue to uh, release new features new updates new performance uh, optimization i think sooner or later all these uh, web3 applications would come to use our cache because they have to uh, because it's decentralized it's just the whole ethos of it and in the future they might become uh, the amazon of uh, cloud computing in the web3 world so that's it for this video i hope you gain a better understanding and if you like this video uh, do give a thumbs up share subscribe also hit the bell button and i'll see you in the next one